Hello and welcome to lecture 36 where I'm going to use R to show you how to do uh, some regression goodness of fit um, analysis. Now there's going to be a number of goodness of fit parameters that we will discuss in the future, in particular when we're involved in multiple regression, but we've talked about a couple so far. So let's look at how we get those uh, regression goodness of fit uh, numbers out of R. To do this, I'm going to use the same data set I have played with in the past. This is a, a set of data that I got from the Anscombe paper. Uh, and if I simply uh, dump a bunch of numbers into Y, uh, in X I'm going to have a, just a sequence of numbers between 4 and 14 in steps of 1. I'll plot them, and then I'll model them using LM. So let me do all of that. Uh, so here's a plot of the Y versus the X, and we have a summary of the model. Uh, just for fun, I'll add the regression line to our plot. When, when I show the summary, I use this command, summary of model. The model is my linear model of Y as a function of X. We get a number of things out. So if I, if I scroll through here, uh, I get things like the coefficients of the model, the standard errors, the t-values, uh, the p-values. But after that, I get the residual standard error, the r-squared value, and the f-statistic. Now, the r-squared value, as we've said, is the coefficient of determination. It tells us the... Um, the fraction of the total variation in the y of the data that is explained by the model. Here it's 6, 6, or 2 thirds of the variation in y is being explained by the model. The other 1 third is left over as residuals. Now, this is r squared value comes right here in this uh, summary output. I can also pull it out of the model. Uh, if, if you want to, we can look at question mark summary dot lm that will tell us everything that you can get out of the summary command for an lm object uh, if i look at that i see that one of the outputs is the r squared value All right so if i wanted to i could say sum i r2 equals summary of model dollar says well give me one of these uh, parameters that are in the list of all the parameters that are an output of summary and then here it says it's r dot squared and if I execute that I see that the my r2 that I out is 0.6665424, etc., which is the same number summary. So if I wanted to, I could easily pull out uh, the R squared value for use in, in something else if I'd like to. All right. One thing we can do is to perform an overall F test. Uh, that is also done automatically. We see uh, that the F statistic is 17.99. Is on one and nine degrees of freedom. So one is the degrees of freedom of the numerator, which is p minus one. Nine is the degrees of freedom of the denominator of the S statistic, which is n minus p. 11 data points, two parameters. Um, and so this is also automatically done and provided in the summary. If I want to, I can pull out that F statistic right here by using the dollar F statistic um, variable. There, it's an array where the first number in the array is, in fact, the F statistic, and the second number is the degrees of freedom in the numerator, and the third number is the degrees of freedom in the denominator. And if I run that, I get the, uh, the value of that F statistic. Now, I mentioned in the discussion in the lectures that for a single regressor variable, the coefficient of that um, has a t-value, 
And in fact, because I only have one uh, parameter, which is affecting the model, uh, the, that t value squared, same thing as the f statistic. Well, I can pull out that t value from the coefficients array. Coefficients is a p by 4 matrix uh, where every row is a different parameter. The first row is for the intercept. The second row would be for the slope. And then each column is the coefficient, its standard error, statistic, and the p-value. So the third column is what I'm looking for. So I want 2, comma 3. I can pull out that and square it. If I do that, and my t squared is exactly 17.98994, which is the exact same value I get in that summary uh, that we had before. So in fact, uh, uh, what I told you actually turned out to be true. Holy cow. Glad. It's different. I'd have to go back and re-record that lecture. All right. Got that right. Easily do the F statistic. And of course, in this case, uh, it's easy to interpret value is 0 0.002 so uh, it's less than our significance uh, alpha and we say the model is significant we could also do a pi square test on this model uh, we have to do this a little bit more manually so because if we assume that the the measurement error on each y value is a constant value then I can calculate the chi-square value by simply taking uh, or finding the standard error of the residuals, squaring it, dividing by the uh, standard error of the measurement, and squaring that. So the standard error of the residuals uh, is one of the parameters I can get out of the model summary. Uh, and if I run that, I get a number, 6, which again is... Uh, also found in the summary output of the model. Um, I could also grab the degrees of freedom. The, the dollar DF is an output of the summary. Uh, it's a three vector as shown here over here in the help. Um, and the, the second one is the residual degrees of freedom, N minus P. So that's the one I'm going to pull out. I'll grab it here. Now I've got the degrees of freedom. Uh, I'm going to simply assume that I know what the measurement error is from outside source, right? You can't get the measurement error from the statistics of the regression. Instead, you have to have some other data that tells you what it is. So I'll just assume that it's 0.8, let's say. And then I can calculate chi-square statistic by taking reduce chi-square statistic, residual standard error squared divided by the measurement error squared, and multiplying it by the degrees of freedom. Right, that gives me the my chi square, which in this case is 21. We're going to be comparing 21 to uh, the number of degrees of freedom, which is 9. And if, if 21 is a lot bigger than 9, then we're going to expect that our model is not explaining all of the uh, variation that's occurring in the data, uh, assuming this measurement error. But to get that more clearly, I can calculate the p-value. I'll use the p chi-square, and the p gives me the probability of, of achieving that particular chi-square statistic and less. So it's the area under the chi-square probability density curve out to the value of my chi-square. So 1 minus that is the right-tailed probability, and that's what will be the p-value. So the p-value I get is 0 0.01. And so for this particular uh, level of measurement error, um, I can say, well, 0 0.01 uh, probability that it occurred um, by random chance, this value of chi-square or larger. Uh, all right, let's suppose that the standard deviation of the, the measurements, the measurement error for each data point, smaller than 0.8. Let's suppose it's 0.5. All right, I'll execute that, and then I'll calculate a new my chi-square, and we see that it's jumped up to 55, which is much larger than the number of degrees of freedom, the expectation value of chi-square, if all of the uncertainty in y 
is either explained by the model or by measurement error. If I calculate the p-value, now for this, um, I get a much smaller value, 1.2 times 10 to the minus 8. Very, very unlikely uh, that I would get a chi-square this big just due to random error. Of course, if the measurement error were much larger, like 1, then my p-value becomes significantly bigger, 0.13, and I, I might be able to justify um, saying that chi-square shows me that I have no equation error or that um, any deviation just could be due to randomness rather than a model that's not capturing all the variation. All right, so this is how we might play with uh, the regression goodness of fit outputs of uh, LM in R how we can calculate chi-square and do a chi-square test of the goodness of fit. Till the next lecture.